Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. We have a great morning planned. I'm very excited to be here. We, and I'd like to get started by talking about the post-PC revolution. It's happening all around us at an amazing pace. And Apple is at the forefront leading this revolution. When we're talking about the post-PC world, we're talking about a world where the PC is no longer the center of your digital world, but rather just a device. We're talking about a world where your new devices, the devices you use the most, need to be more portable, more personal, and dramatically easier to use than any PC has ever been. At Apple, we have three blockbuster post-PC products. The iPod reinvented the music player and changed the way people listen to music and play games. The iPhone reinvented the phone and changed all of our expectations of what a phone could be and how easy and fun it should be. The iPad, the revolutionary device that defined a whole new category. In many ways, the iPad is reinventing portable computing and is outstripping the wildest of predictions. Now, any company would be thrilled to have just one of these devices. At Apple, we're fortunate to have all three. And the momentum has been staggering. Last year alone, we sold 172 million post-PC devices. And this made up 76% of our revenues. Now, this is incredible. Apple has its feet firmly planted in the post-PC future. Now, part of the reason for this is that the things that make a great post-PC company are the things that Apple has been about for many years. It plays to our strengths. It's what we love to do. Let me give you a few examples. Our retail stores. Our retail stores provide the best buying experience and the best customer service anywhere. And while that's important for a buyer of a Macintosh, in some ways it's even more important from a buyer of an iPad or an iPhone or another post-PC device because these devices are new to many people. There needs to be a place to discover them, to learn about them before they're purchased, and learn how to get the most out of them after they're purchased. This is our latest store and our largest store. It just opened this past weekend in Amsterdam. It's absolutely beautiful. And there were a few people waiting <laughs> to see the inside of the store. With our Amsterdam store, we now have 362 retail stores around the world for people to explore these new post-PC devices. And 110 million customers visited them just last quarter. Now, toward the end of last year, we opened a new store in the historic Grand Central Station in Manhattan. This store is jaw-dropping. The turnout for the opening of this store was off the charts. People were really excited to get in the store. And, you know, it's a perfect place for the New York commuter. You can stop by, quickly buy an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac or an iPod, or just come to explore, or come to take a class before you have to catch that next train. Now, we were so excited about the opening of the store that we prepared a video. 
and I'd like to run it for you this morning. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, another key element of our post-PC success is iOS, the world's most advanced mobile operating system and the easiest to use by far. iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch are all based on iOS, and we have now sold an astonishing 315 million devices through last year and 62 million of those just last quarter. Now, one of the most popular features of the latest update to iOS is Siri. And Siri running on the iPhone for us, Siri is your best friend, your intelligent personal assistant who gets things done just by asking. It's a whole new way of interfacing with your phone, and our customers tell us that they love it. And the press has had some pretty good things to say as well. Now, many of you have heard what Siri sounds like in the US. It doesn't look like it's going to rain this weekend. But we thought it might be fun to let you listen to Siri from other parts of the world this morning, like in Australia. There's no rain in the forecast for this weekend. <laughs> and in France. Il ne devrait pas y avoir de pluie pour ce weekend. And in Germany. Es ist kein Regen in der Vorhersage für dieses Wochenende. And today we're bringing Siri to Japan. Siri in Japanese is a part of iOS 5.1, which is the latest edition of iOS. It is available today, and we'll be rolling it out in Japan over the next few weeks. We think our customers there are going to love it, as they have in other parts of the world. Now, you can't talk about the post-PC world without talking about the App Store. And of course, the App Store is the place to go discover and download applications that make your devices even more usable and more personal. We have almost 600,000 apps in the App Store. This is an amazing number, and it's an amazing virtuous cycle. Great apps lead to more downloads, lead to more great apps, which leads to more downloads. In fact, just a few days ago, a lucky customer in China downloaded 
the 25 billionth app. 25 billion. This is a mind-boggling number that we couldn't even have imagined when we launched the App Store just a few years earlier. Another key part of the post-PC experience is iCloud. And of course, iCloud keeps all of your content in sync across all of your devices. Take a photo using the camera on your iPhone and boom, it's pushed automatically and wirelessly to your Mac, your iPad, or even your Apple TV. It's simple, it's elegant, it's automatic, it just works. And in just a few months, we've gone over 100 million customers of iCloud. Part of iCloud is iTunes in the cloud. And iTunes in the cloud is for your music, for your TV shows, and today we're announcing that it now supports movies. So, <laughs> so you can re-download movies you purchased on any of your devices. Also today, we're announcing that movies and TV shows in the iTunes store support 1080p HD. They are absolutely incredible quality. And because we know that many of you like to watch your movies and your TV shows on a widescreen TV with Apple TV, we're announcing a new Apple TV that now supports 1080p. I've been using one of these, the quality is off the charts. It comes with a streamlined new user interface that makes it even easier to search and play great content. Apple TV is the place so that you can see and hear almost anything that you want, from blockbuster movies to top TV shows to your photos and your music and even news and sports, right there on your widescreen TV. I'd like to bring Eddie Q up to demo it for you. Eddie? Thanks, Tim. Uh, I'd like to show you the new Apple TV. And the first thing you'll notice in our built-in screensavers, we've got these incredible new photographs from National Geographic. Let's go to our all new UI. It's full 1080p resolution. It looks gorgeous. Everything is sharper. It's easier to read. The movie posters are much larger of our Hollywood titles available for purchase and rent. TV shows the day after they air. Now with iTunes Match, you have access to your iTunes Music Library, all of your songs, your playlists, all from iCloud. And you can still get access to your music, movies, TV shows, and photos on your computer right from your Apple TV. We've also made it much easier to get to all of the great content we have from third parties, like Netflix, Major League Baseball, the NBA, and many others. Let's go ahead and take a look at PhotoStream. Now, photos look great on a big screen TV, but PhotoStream and the new Apple TV make it even better. Because now, when I take a photo on my iPhone, it automatically appears on my Apple TV without having to do anything at all. And these photos look gorgeous. Full screen, 1080p, the details, they look incredible. Now to get back to the main screen, I just hold the menu on my remote. And let's go ahead and take a look at movies. Here you notice we have a new menu across the top that makes it much easier to navigate. Top movies, you see all of our new releases, the movies that are most popular for purchase or rent. Genius is now built in, so Apple TV will recommend movies for you based on the movies you've already watched. Here's some based on The King's Speech, on The Incredibles. Now to bring the menu back, I can just hit menu on the remote, and there I am. Now, just like we've done for music and TV shows, you now have access to movies you previously purchased right from iCloud. We'll go to Purchased, 
And here's a list of movies I've already bought, and I can watch them at any time at no additional cost. Let's go ahead and watch my favorite movie this year, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. Think about nothing. That's an oxymoron, like now then. An oxymoron is when two words contradict each other. My father and I used to have oxymoron wars. Seriously funny. Stop! Deafening silence. Wah, wah. Original copies. <laughs> Found missing. <laughs> Student teacher? Liquid gas. Clearly confused. Living dead. Oh, almost exactly. Genuine imitation. I love that scene. <laughs> and it looks fantastic in 1080p. That's the new Apple TV, and we think you're going to love it. Thanks, Tim. The new Apple TV retains the same very low price of $99. It's available next week, and you can get your orders in starting today. And I would encourage you to do that. <laughs> that brings us to iPad. We think that iPad is the poster child of the post-PC world. The momentum behind iPad has been incredible and has surprised virtually everyone. We sold almost 15 and a half million iPads just last quarter alone. And to put this in some context, we sold more iPads in the fourth quarter of last year than any PC manufacturer sold of their entire PC line worldwide. We think this gives you an indication of the potential for this product. But you know, it's just not about the numbers. iPad is showing up everywhere in the daily lives of people, in their work lives, in their play lives, all around the world in tens of millions of people. And perhaps PC World said it best. The iPad is so ubiquitous and so entwined in mainstream culture already that it is hard to imagine a time without it. This is a product that is less than two years old. Now, when we set out to create the iPad, we set out to create not just a new product, but a new category. And we said that in order to do that, that the iPad had to be the best device for doing some of the things that you do most often, things like browsing the web or checking email. Now, this is a tall order, but when we asked the iPad users, they told us that's exactly what we had done. When we ask iPad users who had a notebook, a desktop, and a smartphone, their favorite device for email, they responded, iPad. For browsing the web, they responded, iPad. We asked iPad users who also had an e-reader what their favorite device was for reading books. They overwhelmingly said, iPad. We asked iPad users who also had a portable gaming device and even a gaming console, their favorite device for playing games. Their response, iPad. In fact, for so many activities, they responded, iPad. This is incredible when you remember that this device has been on the market for less than two years. 
Now, part of the reason is the incredible bundled apps with iPad and the over 200,000 apps that have been custom built to take advantage of the big, beautiful, multi-touch screen. These apps are gorgeous and groundbreaking. They help you create or learn or do almost anything. Great educational apps like SolarWalk, business apps like StockTouch, incredible games like Infinity Blade. You won't find these incredible apps on other tablets. In fact, and, and in some estimations, there were over 100 competitive tablets that came to market just last year. You won't find that great experience. Let me give you some examples. This is a Twitter app on a Samsung tablet running on Android. You can see it's pretty basic. It kind of looks like a blown up smartphone app. And that's because it's exactly what it is. Compare that to Twitter running on iPad. You can view the tweets. You can see web pages and photos and videos that are mentioned in the tweet on the big, beautiful screen. And here, here it is for Yelp. You know, it looks like a stretched out smartphone app. Lots of white space, tiny text. It's kind of hard to see. Compare that to Yelp running on the iPad clearly designed to take advantage of the large canvas. And this is a key reason why momentum on iPad continues to build and the competitive tablets aren't gaining traction. Now, everyone's been wondering who will come out with a product that's more amazing than the iPad 2 with its big, beautiful 9.7 inch screen, super fast A5 chip, all day battery life, and elegant thin and light design. Everybody's been wondering this. Well, stop wondering. <laughs> we are. Today, we're announcing the new iPad, and it is amazing. We've taken it to a whole new level, and we are redefining the category that Apple created with the original iPad. It makes amazing improvements over the most fundamental features of the design of the device, while retaining everything that millions of people have grown to love about it. I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up to show it to you. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone. Did you want to know about the new iPad? I'm glad. First, new feature of the new iPad, the retina display. You might have heard that an iPad could have a retina display. But until you see it, you can't understand how amazing this is. We introduced the retina display technology first on the iPhone 4, and it's incredible. And to this day, no one has yet matched that display technology in any mobile device. And we're going to bring it to the 9.7 inch screen of the iPad. Now this presents a problem for us in presenting it to you because for the first time, an iPad has higher resolution than this entire display behind me. 
more pixels. So everything you see is going to be scaled down. That's a fun challenge, but we'll, we'll do our best. So for example, when you turn on that new iPad, you are going to see graphics, text, icons sharper than you can imagine. They're just beautiful. When you go to read a book, you're going to see text that rivals anything you've seen in print, in newspapers or magazine. Everything you do is just going to look stunning, surfing the web, reading your emails, and photos are just going to look amazing at high resolution on that gorgeous big display. And this helps customers around the world, particularly if they read in different languages, character-based languages like Japanese and Chinese. The fonts are amazing. It really is, is a big step forward. Well, the new iPad display is 2048 by 1536 pixels. And if you do the math really quick, you'll figure out that's over 3.1 million pixels on this display, the most ever in a mobile device. Put another way, many of you all have an HD TV at home. These televisions, 50 inches, 60 inches, have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Here's an iPad scaled appropriately next to it. It has more pixels. Let's overlay the photos, the same photo as they could be displayed on each of these devices. You see the iPad shows over a million more pixels than your own HDTV does at home. That's incredible. And of course, to display that many pixels, we pack them really tightly. There are 264 pixels per inch in this display. And that is enough to call it a retina to display. Well, why is that? Well, you may recall when we launched the iPhone, we said that the iPhone, when held at a normal distance, 10 inches or closer, has enough pixels that your retina in your eye can't distinguish those individual pixels. And yes, there's real math behind that. <laughs> Experts agree with us. Well, the same is true of the new iPad. When you hold it at a normal distance, in this case 15 inches or even closer, your retina in your eye cannot discern those individual pixels. It has enough pixel density that you can't pick out the pixels. And the images on it looks stunning. The new iPad display also has greater color saturation, 44% greater than the iPad 2. So side by side, you're going to see images just pop out. They are so much more colorful and richer in their detail. Now there's four times the number of pixels on the new iPad display. So it takes a lot of graphic horsepower to drive that display if you want to keep it smooth and fast and beautiful to use. Well, you know, the iPad 2 used the A5 chip, Apple design chip, which is the best chip in a mobile device to drive a great display. But we needed even more horsepower for this new iPad and its retina display. So we've created the Apple A5X chip. And what's the X for? Quad core graphics. Quad core graphics designed specifically for the retina display to drive four times the number of pixels. Well, how does that compare to what others are using? Well, others are using chips like this NVIDIA Tegra 3. If you normalize its graphics performance at one, the Apple A5 was already twice as fast. And the new A5X brings four times the performance. It is a graphics powerhouse. So the new iPad has a retina display with more pixels than any mobile device has ever had. It is 2048 by 1536 resolution, over 3 million pixels. It has greater color saturation. It has the A5X quad core graphics. This is the best mobile display that has ever shipped. And it's a real revolution. That's the first feature. <laughs> the second feature an eyesight camera. Well, you know, on the front of our devices, we have a FaceTime camera. It's most often used for FaceTime video calls that our customers love making. And on the back, we have a camera. And when that camera gets of such quality and capability that you're proud to use it as your everyday camera for photographs, we call it an eyesight camera. And the new iPad has a great eyesight camera. It's a five megapixel backside illuminated sensor. We brought the optic system from the iPhone 4S, 
five element lens, hybrid infrared filter on it. And we have an ISP built into our A5X chip to do some great software algorithms and capabilities on this for photographs. But of course, the ultimate measure of a camera are the pictures you take with it. So let me show you some pictures taken with this new iPad. The iPad has uh, auto exposure, so it gets great exposure, great color. It has autofocus. It's incredible at the detail it picks up, and you see that lens can deliver great edge-to-edge -edge sharpness and detail. It has auto face detection, so you can take individual or group shots, it knows just what to do. It has auto exposure lock and auto focus lock, so you can compose exactly the photograph you want. It is just a blast to use. That's Derby, world's largest dog. <laughs> so it has a five megapixel eyesight camera, advanced optics with an IR filter, autofocus, auto white balance, face detection, everything to deliver a great photo experience built into an iPad. Number three. HD video recording, now a 1080p resolution. Full HD resolution, so wherever you are, you wanna grab a video for work or play or school, you've got a great camera built in to do that with. Let me just play a very quick, typical home movie clip that you might grab with your iPad and its 1080p camera. Now it's great to have a high quality HD camera with you everywhere you go, but there's a lot more to it. We use that A5X chip to do some pretty advanced things. For example, it's example image stabilization. So what we've got here is a video I'll show you of what it's like with image stabilization turned off and what it's like with it turned on. And it's always turned on, but I think you'll be able to see the difference here because we capture right from the sensor. So here's the video as if it were unstabilized and now here's what our software does to stabilize it. It's really nice. I think they did a great job pretending there wasn't a camera in front of them as they walked along the dock, didn't they? So that's 1080p video recording, video stabilization. We do temporal noise reduction to help improve quality in low light situations. And it is perfect to watch these videos back on that gorgeous large retina display. Fourth feature, voice dictation. And of course, the iPad, like all great iOS devices, has a software keyboard from Apple that's built into all the software you use automatically. And now, you'll see there's a new key on the bottom, a microphone. So you can type, or you can just tap it, speak into your iPad, and it will dictate what you have to say. It works like this. It's day 12 here in Barcelona, comma, which means two more days left before we have to leave, period. I'm so not ready to go, comma. It's amazing here, period. And if I could somehow magically bring the weather here home with me, comma, I would, period. And that's it. That's how it translates what you say into the text you want to type. The new iPad supports English in US English, British English, Australian English, French, German, and of course now, Japanese. So that's voice dictation. The fifth feature, next generation wireless. <laughs> now you know the iPad 2 has already had great wireless performance and it supports networks like EVDO with a maximum theoretical downlink of 3.1 megabits per second. And it has supported HSPA, for example, on GSM networks, with, with a maximum downlink of 7.2 megabits per second. But now with the new iPad, iPad, we're adding a great deal more. We're adding HSPA Plus, with a maximum downlink of 21 megabits. And if you haven't heard about this, it's great. Dual carrier HSDPA, which we're starting to see show up in Europe, Australia, and other places around the world with a maximum downlink of 42 megabits per second. And of course, topping it off, long-term evolution, or LTE, which is a maximum of 73 megabits per second downlink. So the performance 
is amazing. And you're going to love using it on these high-speed new networks. So let me give you a, a couple everyday examples of how you might use this. Here we have an HSPA network being used by the iPad on the left, and we have LTE being used by the one on the right. These are actually recorded, so I can play them back and you can see them right here on the big screen. And it's a simple everyday task. You're gonna, I'm gonna click on an email that has a bunch of embedded photos and see what happens. So here we go. We select the top new email message that came in, and on the right, you'll see the photo will come in faster on LTE. In fact, the next large photo will come in, and the next one, before even the first photo, starts to show up on HSPA. So we're all done, we've got all five large photos on LTE, and we're still waiting even for the second one on HSPA. So that's one example of the difference of using it in everyday tasks, simply the things we download, applications, music, emails. Here's a different kind of example. We all like to do great things like watch videos on our iPad, surf the web to sites like Vimeo, and watch HD, high quality video. But if you don't have the high speed bandwidth, the best thing to do is just let it buffer for a while and wait and then hit play. But what if you could start to watch right away because it could download the video faster than you can watch it in real time? So watch what happens. I'm gonna hit play, and this is a great film, the bird film from Andrew Zuckerman Studios. And on the right, on LTE, it starts playing right away. And you can see with the progress bar on the top, it is loading the video faster than we can watch it in real time. On the device on the left, which is on EVDO, or we could have used GSM as well there, it's buffering the video, waiting to save enough frames before it starts to play. That's what we've been used to. On the right is what we're gonna start getting used to. It fundamentally changes how you experience things like video. So that's what it's like to use these high-speed new networks. We're working with a number of carriers to support LTE on the new iPad, and we're working with AT&T, Verizon, Rogers, Bell, and TELUS. They'll be the first to be able to work with LTE on the brand new iPad, but we have other high-speed networks, as I've mentioned, around the world. Now, as you remember, with 3G, when 3G phones first started showing up, they actually have many different bands, so you got different phones for different networks around the world. And over time, they start to come together. Well, the same thing's happening with 4G LTE. In fact, even more so. There are many bands around the world. So for example, in the US, we'll have two versions of the new iPad. One for LTE bands to be used on the AT&T network, and another for the LTE bands on the Verizon network, because they're different. But no matter which ones you pick anywhere in the world, below that, they're completely compatible. They're 3G world ready. So whichever one you pick, you can roam anywhere around the world on the fastest HSPA or EVDO networks, and you have what you need. In addition, we've added software to make it a personal hotspot. So if your carrier supports a personal hotspot feature, you can share that high-speed network from your new iPad directly with up to five devices. And if you've ever used this, you know our software is state-of-the-art and so easy to use. So the new iPad has 4G LTE. It is fast, HSPA plus and dual carrier HSDPA networking. It's 3G world ready. It has a personal hotspot. When you add all these networks, plus the Wi-Fi networking and the Bluetooth networking, it's no small feat. This new iPad has the most wireless bands of any device that has ever shipped, and it is truly revolutionary. So the new iPad, it has a breakthrough display, a retina display at 9.7 inches with over three million pixels. It has the A5X chip with quad-core graphics. It has a five megapixel eyesight camera. It is 1080p video recording. It is voice dictation. And it is the most wireless bands ever in a device capped off with 4G LTE. Now you may be thinking, a lot of these technologies consume a fair amount of power. Four times the number of pixels, quad-core graphics engine, LTE networking. So how did it do on battery life? Well, you may recall the iPad 2 we claim 10 hours of battery life for most of the things you do, and when you're on 3G networking for wireless web, nine hours. 
Well, the new iPad delivers the same 10 hours of battery life for all the things we do. And when you're on 4G, nine hours. So the team has worked incredibly hard to deliver this kind of battery performance so you can use it all day long. Yet, it remains amazingly thin at just 9.4 millimeters and amazingly light at just 1.4 pounds. So the new iPad comes in black and white. And you're probably at this point thinking, I want one, what's it gonna cost? <laughs> I am. So the new iPad, you remember the iPad 2 starts at 499 for 16 gigabytes. Well, I'm really excited to tell you the new iPad will be priced at just $499. comes in three storage capacities, 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes at 499, 599, and 699 for Wi-Fi models. And for Wi-Fi plus 4G, 629, 729, and 829. The same prices as the iPad 2 before it. And the new iPad will be available on March 16th. And if, yeah, just one week. And if you want one as badly as I do, you'll be happy to know that the pre-orders start today. So on March 16th, the new iPad will be available in the US, Canada, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia. A really big, fast start. But it doesn't stop there. One week later, we're adding 25 more countries. So we are going to have the fastest rollout we've ever had for a new device. Back to the software, because ultimately, this is going to be amazing when you turn it on. You're not going to believe how beautiful it looks. And the team has worked really hard to make all the software that comes on that iPad look gorgeous. So when you're surfing the web, Safari's been updated to take full advantage of that retina display. When you're reading your emails, mail's been updated to take full advantage of that retina display. When you're using your photos, the photo app has been fully up to updated, take advantage of all that amazing color and resolution. Everything's been updated. But as you remember with the iPhone 4, when it went to the retina display, developers didn't have to do anything and their apps looked better, and we used scaling for the graphics and automatically sized the text, but they could do even more to make them better. So right out of the box, you'll start using your applications, you'll find they look great. Things are scaled up with the four times the number of pixels and text because of our text APIs and libraries look stunning, so everything will work great. But if the developer takes a little bit of time, just as they did with the iPhone, they can do things with their applications that are just mind-blowing, amazing, incredible, using that retina display and the A5X chip. So we've asked a few developers just to spend a week and take a look at the new iPad and show us what they can do with it with all that amazing graphics horsepower. So we're gonna bring up three demos to show you some really amazing stuff. The first is from Namco. Namco is a great developer of a lot of titles on the iPhone and iPad, titles of everything from Pac-Man to Sky Gamblers. And I'm really excited to bring, the, bring up James Shelton. James is the game design director for Namco. James. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm joined up here by Rezvan Baraitaru from Revo. And uh, today, we're thrilled to show you a first glimpse of our new flight sim game, Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy, running on the new iPad. Great gaming experiences are about immersion, being able to really lose yourself in the game. And the new iPad helps us achieve this in two key ways. First, the extra graphics performance lets us increase the level of detail of everything in the game. And second, the astonishing resolution of the new display means absolutely none of this detail goes to waste. Just look at the heat haze coming off of the engines here. Look at the, the scale of this city. Look at the detail in its buildings. And uh, check this out.
Now, aerobatic maneuvers like this are just what real planes can do, and with, with our simple gesture-based controls, even novice players are gonna be able to try them out for themselves. Now, Resvan's gonna go on patrol and show us a little more of that action. All right, we've got the carrier out there, just launched three fighters. Uh, Rizvan, why don't you take out the carrier first before it uh, does any more damage? Target locked, missiles away. Ah, excellent, nice shot. Now, okay, that's, that's 50 jets up there in a dogfight. Uh, this action's a little bit too hot, so Rizvan, why don't you why don't you just bail out? To do this, he shakes the device, it'll pop that chute, and he can uh, live to fly another day. <laughs> Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy delivers console quality single and multiplayer experiences. An experience that not even this giant screen here could actually show you. The only place to truly experience the intensity of action, that richness of detail, is on the new iPad itself. Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy launches exclusively on iOS later this month. Thank you. Thank you, James. It's absolutely incredible to have that level of gaming now in a device you carry around with you. It's never been done before. Well, next up, Autodesk. I'm sure you've heard of Autodesk. They make incredible professional graphic software for so many uses. They brought AutoCAD to the Mac. It's doing well. And they've created a line of products for iPad that are amazing. And a lot of professionals count on their drawing tools with Sketchbook Pro. So I'm really excited to bring up Chris Chung, Sketchbook Product Line Manager, to show you a brand new project running on the new iPad. Chris? Welcome. Thank you, Phil. Two and a half years ago, Sketchbook became Autodesk's first breakthrough app on iOS. And it had a profound impact on our company. Today, we have 15 Autodesk titles on the App Store that have been downloaded more than 20 million times. Let me put that in perspective. In our 29-year history, Autodesk has become a leader in software with over 10 million professional customers on desktop. With iOS, we've been able to reach tens of millions of new users in only two years. It's amazing. Today, I'm excited to show you something new. With the help of Lawrence Yang, I want to introduce Sketchbook Inc. Sketchbook Inc. is a new drawing app that focuses on line art. So it's totally complementary with Sketchbook Pro. In fact, Lawrence actually started this piece in Sketchbook Pro and is using the painting he created as a background. You'll notice right away that we take a lot of design cues from Sketchbook Pro. We have two customizable panels on the sides, one for ink styles, the other for color swatches. We have an inkwell on top for quick access to color selection and a simple toolbar. For ink, we developed a brand new engine, one that really takes advantage of the incredible graphic power of the new iPad. This is not an ordinary vector application. It's not the same technology, and it's not the same interaction. It's resolution independent, so you can see, no matter how far you zoom, all the strokes stay crisp and smooth. This also allows us to export massive images uh, in excess of 100 megapixels. So, um, you know, there's a reason why they call this the visual arts. You have to see it with your eyes. Retina display is luscious. It takes it to the next level and creates an immersive environment. Professional and everyday artists are going to love this device and it's gonna inspire them to create beautiful pieces of artwork, just like what Lawrence has been creating for you live today. Which by the way, dude, that's 
pretty amazing for 90 seconds. <laughs> Autodesk Sketchbook Inc. will be available this April exclusively on iOS. Thank you very much. And it's one of these things that wait till you see it and try it. The, the, using your finger to draw on a resolution of a display that you cannot even see pixels with vector drawing tools is truly a breakthrough. Well, for our third and last demo, Epic Games. Well, if you know Epic Games, you know they've created some landmark titles that have pushed the boundaries of what anyone thought was possible in a mobile device. And they're going to do it again with another amazing new project. And to show you this new project running on the new iPad, I'd like to bring up Mike Capps, president of Epic Games. Mike? Hey. Welcome. Thanks a lot, Tom. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is great to be back. So just like Apple has raised the bar today for mobile computing, Epic's iOS exclusive franchise, Infinity Blade, has been raising the bar for mobile gaming. And uh, we're really excited to do that with the new iPad. So today I'm going to introduce Epic's Rod Ferguson and the latest chapter in the Infinity Blade saga, Dungeons. So in Dungeons, you are the apprentice to the master of the forge. And you're on a quest to craft the ultimate weapon, the Infinity Blade. So you guys are in for a visual feast of unprecedented detail today. I mean, seriously, these leaves here are blocking the light from the sun, right? So let's dive into this abandoned mine. And as soon as we go in, you're going to notice that your eyes, pupils are adjusting to the darkness. Cool grays are going to give way to warm orange tones from the lava. That's a technique called tone mapping that our cinematographers use to dynamically adjust brightness and color palettes for better immersion. And of course, just like all our products, this is running real time. Rod, if you want to zoom in and show them the incredible detail we're getting here. Yeah, well, that's enough sightseeing, Mike. Uh, if we're going to craft the Infinity Blade, I need the fire silk from the Spider Queen. Oh, abandoned, huh? A few quick swipes, but now with the touch interface I just pulled, and I can connect my enemies for a chain attack. Awesome. So, well, well it is, come on. So uh, depth of field post-processing is, is really paying off here. You can see the lava fields and the landscapes in the background. That's a filmmaker's technique to separate and point your eye to certain parts of the screen. Also show the depth and scale of the world. Yeah, whatever, Mike, there's a treasure chest here. It's all about the money. It, it kind of looks like a trap, though, Rod. I'll right, see. Oh, sweet iron ore. I need that. Oh, uh, but that's not good. Kind of looks like a trap, Rod. <laughs> uh, maybe I can kind of sneak out this way. Ow. Ow. No. Time for double smash. And finish him off. Nice. Ding, level seven. As we nerds say, grats, Rod. <laughs> so you can see during that close-up how the Unreal Engine is unleashing the power of the new iPad for just unparalleled character detail and environments. I mean, if you think about it, uh, this new device actually has more memory and higher screen resolution than an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3. So these guys are redefining mobile gaming Again. Uh, this could be it, Mike. Gee, gee what was your first clue, Rod? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come to Papa. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a lot of spiders. Fortunately, a few quick circles and ice spikes. I'm 100% certain that was a trap. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. 
so Infinity Blade Dungeons will bring a robust crafting system, dynamic dungeon crawling all to the world of Infinity Blade, and it's only going to look like this and play like this on the new iPad. Infinity Blade 2 is available right now on the App Store, and Dungeons will be coming soon. Thanks, everybody, for playing. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. Amazing. Tim, I'm going to need a few weekends off to catch up and play that. Well, as you may recall, when we launched the first iPad, we launched some software applications with it to demonstrate how far you could go with creativity software. And that was iWork. We launched iWork with the first iPad. And it really set a high bar for what was possible. As you know, iWork includes Keynote, Pages, and Numbers. And we're updating them for the new iPad. You're going to find in these new applications stunning new 3D charts and animations. You're going to see new builds and transitions. But most importantly, you're going to see all three have been updated to take full advantage of this retina display. And the documents you can create with the new iWork applications are truly stunning. These applications are going to remain $9.99 each. And if you've purchased them before, it's a free update. And they're available starting today on the App Store. And then with the iPad 2, we introduced some other applications as well. iLife applications with GarageBand and iMovie. And they're being updated as well. GarageBand has a new version. It adds some great new features. Smart strings join smart guitars, smart keyboards, and smart drums so you can have your own string orchestra accompanying your music. It has a note editor, so after you've created your song, you can go back and change your performance. You can use iCloud to make sure you have your, your songs that you created on all your devices. And there's great new ways to share the songs you create with friends. But the best new feature is something we call Jam Session. So now up to four iOS devices running GarageBand can all play together and at the same time create a new song over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It's really cool. And to show you what it looks like, we've got a very brief video. Isn't that cool? At the end, don't you want the guitar to play just like smash it? And no. <laughs> One of the best things about the new Garage Band is the instruments on the Retina display look absolutely luscious. So Garage Band remains $4.99. It's a free update to anyone who's already purchased it, and it's available today from the App Store as well. That's GarageBand. iMovie, also a new update with an amazing new feature. So you know, when we brought iMovie from the Mac to the iPad, we reimagined how you do video editing in a multi-touch experience. It starts with this marquee where you can pick your projects or create a new one. Well, now, not only you can create a movie, but you can also create a movie trailer as well. This is something we had brought to the Mac, and customers have loved it because it is so fun to be scripted right through how to create an amazing, quick and easy video piece. So all you do on the iPad is you select from a bunch of different styles and templates, and you're presented with a simple interface for creating your movie trailer. There's never been video editing like this. You fill out your outline, for example, what your movie studio name is going to be and who's the director. And then you tap on the storyboard, and you have a visual storyboard of the piece you're creating, where it tells you exactly what shots you need, like a close-up, an action shot, a group shot. But for the first time ever, you have a device 
where you can outline and storyboard your video, use the 1080p camera to record the video, and then play it back on that high resolution display. It is truly a transformative way to do video editing. And let me show you a video of just one example of the kind of trailers you can create with the new iMovie on the new iPad. Isn't that incredible? And that music is part of the music selection we provide with you with the trailers, all pre-recorded by a symphony orchestra just so that you can use it in your own movie trailers. iMovie, it's $4.99, it's a free update to anyone who already has it, and it's also available today in the App Store. So GarageBand and iMovie, two of the applications that make up iLife. But of course you all know, right? There's really three applications in iLife. On the Mac, there's three applications, and one of them is the most popular one of all. So I am really excited to tell you that today we're introducing iPhoto for iPad, and it is amazing. Now you're probably wondering, well, why do I need an iPhoto on the iPad? I've already got the camera app. I've already got a Photos app, and they're great for the things you do every day. But if you're someone like many of us are, who truly love the photos they take of their family and their friends and want to do even more with your photos, that's what iPhoto is for. With iPhoto, it'll use the same photo library on your iPad or iPhone, but it gives you great new ways to browse through all those photos. And it has truly breakthrough ways to edit your photos with new multi-touch gestures. And we've packed it with professional quality effects and there's powerful new brushes for applying those effects. And if you want to use more than one device, let's say you want to take a picture with your iPhone 4S, but keep your iPhoto library in your iPad, you can do that directly with photo beaming to beam high resolution photos over between your devices. And we've invented a great new way to share your photos with your friends in a way that tells stories of the places you've visited and the events you've been at. We call these photo journals, and these photo journals use iCloud as a great new way to share your photos. And to show you this brand new, amazing application, I'm really proud to bring up Randy Ubilos, our chief architect for photo and video applications. Randy? Thanks, Phil. So ever since the introduction of the iPad, we've seen its potential for digital photography. To be able to have something so light and portable to carry around with you instead of lugging around a laptop is really amazing. With iPhoto for iOS, we had the opportunity to reinvent it and take advantage of multi-touch and take it to a whole new level. I'd like to show it to you. We'll launch the application and we start out with these beautiful shelves that show you all the photos that are on your device. We've got your albums. We can switch over, take a look at your events. You get to see all the photos that you have here. If we tap on one, we can take a look. We bring up the editing interface. It's very customizable. I can swipe in from the side to bring in a thumbnail view. I can change the sides of this to change the number of columns here. I can even flip this from left to right for left-handed or right-handed layout. Now, these are photos from a trip that I recently took to Antarctica. I took along a digital SLR, took over 3,500 pictures, and used the camera connection kit. Uh, it was field testing the application there. 
When you're dealing with lots and lots of photos like that, one of the first things you want to do is find the best photos. And we have some great ways for doing that. You can simply tap on things to take a look at them, but if you want to compare photos, I can just press and hold and bring them up side by side. A lot of times you have a situation like this where I've got a bunch of pictures of this seal, and I could manually press and hold to compare those, but I can also let iPhoto do it for me. If I just double tap there, it's going to actually analyze the thumbnails and find all the similar photos and put them up side by side for me so I can compare them. Now, when I want to go through and find the best ones, like the second one in the first column, he's not looking at the camera, I'll just swipe down. That one disappears. The one at the bottom, same thing, he's not looking at the camera, swipe down. If I want to see them larger, I just tap. It goes to a larger side, I, size, I can swipe. His eyes are kind of closed there, so I'll swipe down, not looking at the camera. So now I'm down to two. The one at the top's nice, but I think I like the expression on the one at the bottom better, so I'm going to swipe down on the one on the top. Now I can zoom in by just pinching apart, and you can see the amount of, the kind of detail that I have here. If I bring up my info panel, the reason for this, this was shot on a Nikon D300. It's a 12 megapixel image, and all 12 megapixels are available here. In fact, I can work with images up to 19 megapixels on the, on the iPad. And on the retina display, these images look absolutely amazing. So now that we've chosen the image, the best, the best one of that group, I'll touch the flag button to mark it. Once I've chosen a number of photos and flagged them, I can tap at the top of the thumbnail column and select to just view the flagged photos. Photos like this uh, penguin staring contest here. <laughs> Once you've uh, got the photos, we have some great sharing options. I'll tap the share button. We have things like email and Twitter, Flickr, Facebook that you can send your photos to. Once you've chosen the best photos, you want to make them look even better. And we've got some great tools for that. Jump over to another al uh, album here. So here's a nice photo, but we can make that look even better. Down at the bottom along my toolbar, I'm going to tap the Auto Enhance button, and we're going to automatically adjust the contrast and color of the image to make it look better. But you'll notice the horizon line is not quite level. So I'm going to, down along the, in the lower left here, I've got my tools. I'm going to tap on the first one, which is my crop tool. And iPhoto is going to automatically analyze the photo and find the horizon line. It's drawn a line across, and I have a button on the right side, and I just touch that button, and it straightens the horizon line for me. So I'm... <laughs> so with just two touches, I'm able to go from this to this. And that's another feature. In the upper right corner, there's a button, Show Original. Anytime, I can always compare the original to the one that I'm working with. Now, the crop tool also has some great multi-touch features to it. So I can just use my fingers to pinch apart and pan around. If I turn my hand, I can actually rotate. I've got a dial at the bottom that allows me to do the same as well. I can grab a corner and change the cropping. Or if I want to go to some standard sizes, I tap the gear in the lower right corner, and it brings up some standard sizes. So say I want to do a square crop there, and I can just reframe. And just like that, I can crop the photo. Now, another thing that you run into a lot with photos is things that are too light or too dark. And the second tool I have is my exposure tool. And this brings up our unified control at the bottom that allows me to adjust the shadows, the highlights, the brightness, and the contrast. But I can do this in a great multi-touch way as well. The shadows in the lower left corner are a bit too dark. So I'm just going to touch my finger in the lower left, and it brings up these controls, and I just slide upwards in there, and up come the shadows. The same, the same thing works for color. I'll switch to my color tool, and now I'm just going to touch and slide up, and it's going to adjust the saturation. So I'm able to go from this to this with just two touches of my finger. It's really fun and really easy. Now, sometimes you want to adjust just a portion of an image. And these multi-touch controls allow me to do that. I can touch in the sky and just slide to the left, and I'm going to be able to darken or lighten my sky. So just with one slide of my finger, I go from this to this with a nice deep sky. Really, really easy. Another color issue that you run into is white balance. We've got some great tools for white balance, but we have a brand new one, which is a skin tone white balance. And I just touch on the skin tone control, up pops this little loop, and as I drag this around, it's live white balancing on whatever's under the loop, and I just drag this onto anything where there's skin tone, and I'm able to go from this greenish cast over to a really nicely balanced image. Really, really easy. Now, sometimes you run into situations in an image like this one where part of the image is nice, like the sky, 
but part of it's kind of dark, like the face. We've got some great tools for that. I'm gonna bring up my brushes. I've got this great brush palette that comes up. I've got repair, red eye, saturation, lightness, and sharpness that I can do. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my lighten brush, and now I'm just gonna use my finger to work on the image. I just rub over the image, and these brushes are set up to work in a very soft way, so you just go back and forth a couple of times on the image, and so I'm able to go from this to this and get a very natural looking change to the image just using my finger with the multi-touch on the screen. So a great set of brushes that I can use, and like everything else on iPhoto, it's all non-destructive. So I can go back and make changes to any of this at any time that I'd like. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show is we have some great effects. And that's my fifth tool. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my effects, and up pops my swatch book of effects that I, we have here. And we've got a whole bunch of different ones that I can choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my black and white card. Now, to apply a black and white, I just touch on the little film strip down here, and it applies a black and white. Professional photographers know there are lots of different ways to do black and white. You can mix the red, green, and blue very differently to get different effects. And I can do that by just sliding my finger along this strip down here. And I can get all kinds of different effects. I just slide my finger to where I like it with kind of a dark sky. I kind of like the way that looks. And then I've got a couple of extra options here, like I can touch on the vignette, and then just using my fingers, I can pinch and get a great effect just with a couple of movements of my finger. So we've got some great photographic effects. We've also got some great artistic effects like, a like tilt shift and watercolor that can be applied with just a couple of touches of your finger. So some great effects in there as well. Now, once you've uh, chosen your images and made them look good, you wanna be able to share them. And we have a great new way of doing that. Switch over here to an event. I've got a set of pictures from a trip to Thailand and I'm gonna go ahead and select to share those. I'm gonna choose journal, choose all, we'll give this a name, and when I say create journal, it's automatically gonna lay these photos out onto pages, one for each day of the trip, and then when I go ahead and show these, we end up with all my photos laid out in this really beautiful looking layout, really cleanly laid out on here. If you've marked photos with a caption or marked them as a favorite, those photos will be the ones that are preferred into the larger spaces on the screen. It's really easy to adjust this as well. I just touch the edit button in the upper right corner and I can pick up and move around any of the photos on here. I can grab one, make it larger. I can reframe it on here really easily. So it's really easy to move the photos around. One of the things that's really great about this is it lets you tell a story along with your photos. And we have some great story elements that you can add. I've got a palette of them up here. I can just grab, drag them in on the screen here. I'll just double tap. I happen to have some text on the clipboard to, as an example there. We have some great other elements I can put in. I have a calendar element that I can drop in, which automatically picks up the date from the photos around it. Same thing for a map. Maps automatically pick up the location of the photos around them. And then you can pinch and pan to align them just how you like. We even have a weather item, which is gonna use the date and the location to look up the weather for that date. So these are really fun to put together and they allow you to really put some story around your photos. But once you put this together, they look great on your iPad, but you wanna be able to share them. We have a great new sharing option where we can share to a new feature of iCloud where this gets published up to iCloud and then you can share a link with your friends and family that they can then view in any web browser on, their, uh, on an iPad or on a laptop any place in the world. So it's really easy to share this with your friends and family. Now everything that I've shown here can also be done on the iPhone. This is a universal application so all of the editing, selection, even the journal creation can be done on the iPhone as well. And that is iPhoto for iOS. Thanks very much. Thank you, Randy. That is truly a breakthrough piece of photo software. It's gonna be priced at just $4.99, and it's available starting today on the App Store.
So I, know about, I don't know about you, but the second I'm out of here, I'm going to be downloading it and starting to play with my photo library. And the real amazing thing is if you step back and think about it, we've now brought all of iLife to the iPad with all, all new versions of these amazing applications. So everything from iWork and iLife. So don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't create on an iPad. And it's stunning, most of all, on the new iPad with its retina display. So if you can't tell by now, we absolutely love this iPad and all the amazing software that it can run. So when we love a product so much, we can't help ourselves. We create a video about it. So I'd like to run that video now. We believe technology is at its very best when it's invisible. When you're conscious only of what you're doing, not the device you're doing it with. An iPad is the perfect expression of that idea. It's just this magical pane of glass that can become anything you want it to be. And that's why so many people in so many different places are using it for so many different things. It's a more personal experience with technology than people have ever had. And now, with the new iPad, we're elevating that experience by dramatically improving the fundamental elements that define it. We gave it a powerful new A5X chip for stunning graphics, a five megapixel eyesight camera with our state-of-the-art optics. The speed of 4G LTE. We created amazing new software that redefines what you can do with music, movies, and photos. And all of this is brought to life on the Retina display, the highest resolution display ever on a mobile device. The display is what the iPad's all about. So when you enhance the display, you enhance everything. And the Retina display on the third generation iPad is just spectacular. It's got a resolution of 2048 by 1536. That's 3.1 million pixels, four times more than the previous iPad, and over a million more than what's called high definition on other devices. And we've packed all these pixels into a display that's just 9.7 inches. But engineering it wasn't as simple as just jamming in more pixels. A pixel is made up of red, green, and blue subpixels, with a signal telling each one when and how much to light up. That's how colors are created. But when you squeeze four times the pixels into the same space, signals can get crossed, colors become distorted, and images get fuzzy. To solve this, we had to elevate the pixels onto a different plane and separate them from the signals. It's a major breakthrough. And it's the key to making the pixels so small and so close together that the human eye can't even distinguish them. So type looks razor sharp. And you'll see details in photos that you never knew were there. A wider color gamut brings out even more detail and gives you colors that are incredibly rich, deep, and vivid. This isn't just the most advanced display you've ever held in your hand. It's the most advanced display you've ever seen. The iPad is known for its fluid graphics performance, but because the Retina display has four times the pixels to drive, you need a lot more power. So when we designed the new A5X chip, we gave it quad-core graphics. It makes everything you do feel really fast and smooth. And it's so efficient, the new iPad still gets the same great 10-hour battery life. To go with a beautiful display, we added a new EyeSight camera. It takes five megapixel photos using the same advanced optics we developed for the iPhone 4S. And it shoots gorgeous 1080p HD video at up to 30 frames per second. But one of the biggest breakthroughs in the new iPad is its next generation wireless technology. It works with more bands than any mobile device ever. So it connects to more of the world's fastest data networks, all the way up to 4G LTE. With all the amazing technology built into the new iPad, we had an opportunity to create software that is truly groundbreaking. And that meant completing the iLife family of apps. There's a new version of GarageBand that lets you wirelessly connect up to four iOS devices so you and your friends can jam and record together. To complement the iSight camera and the new iPad, we made iMovie even better. Now you can shoot 1080p HD video 
and turn it into a Hollywood style movie trailer in minutes. All on a single device you can take with you everywhere. And now we're bringing iPhoto to the iPad. It's unbelievably powerful and so simple to use. The smart browsing feature lets you go through lots of shots really quickly. You just double tap on a photo and it finds others that look just like it. So you can pick your favorite. With multi-touch gestures, you can make your blue sky bluer. You can apply dozens of professional quality effects with just a few taps. And with photo journals, you can share your photos in ways you never could before. These new iLife apps open up all kinds of possibilities for the iPad. The iPad introduced the world to an entirely new way to experience technology. And now with the new iPad, we've taken an experience that millions of people love and made it profoundly better. It's the ultimate iPad, and we think it's going to change how you see and do just about everything. We think the new iPad will really change what people believe is possible with, cat with this category of device. But we also saw the opportunity to do something even more. So along with the new iPad, we are going to keep the iPad 2 in the line as well. As you know, it started at 16 gigabytes for $499. Well, I'm really excited to tell you that starting today, the iPad 2 will start at just $399. This is really huge. So many more people can afford to get into this brand new groundbreaking technology on this amazing device. So many more schools can afford to move faster to new iPad technology into the classroom. This is a really big deal. And now the line looks like this, starting with an iPad 2 for just $399 and $529 for Wi-Fi plus 3G. And the new iPad at $499 all the way up to 829. So there really is something for everyone at every end of the spectrum. Well, and that's our story today about the new iPad, and I hope you're as excited about it as we are. I'd like to turn it back to Tim. Thank you, Tim. With the amazing new iPad, a new affordable price for the very popular iPad 2, and amazing software like iPhoto and the rest of the iLife and iWork suites, we have redefined once again the category that Apple created just two years ago with the original iPad. And we're so proud of this product that we prepared an ad, and I'd love to play it for you this morning. When a screen becomes this good, colors are more vibrant. Words are pin sharp. Everything is more brilliant. Because when a screen becomes this good, it's simply you and the things you care about. The stunning retina display on the new iPad. I hope you can see why we believe the iPad has enormous potential and is the ultimate poster child of the post-PC world. I'd like to thank all of those employees at Apple and everyone who supports Apple for making today possible. It's a privilege of a lifetime for me to work with so many innovative people, the most innovative on Earth. Now, only Apple could deliver this kind of innovation in such a beautiful, integrated, and easy to use way. It's what we love to do. It's what we stand for. And across the year, you're going to see a lot more 
of this kind of innovation. We are just getting started. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you.